I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with an ecstatic Jamie Conlon after a wonderful night of boxing in Frankfurt. Jamie, sum that up in a few words. Podrick fucking McCrory. That's his few. Yeah, okay. What an eight, fuck me. Um, it really was. It, it, it faded in anyone's head when we were all week. No one was thinking this is going to go to distance. It was the only way this is going to work as if it was an accurate. And that was the way he fought, that was the preparation, that was the way everything kind of was prepared for. And it's exactly the way it turned out. Um, the worry at the start, would, would he be able to take Potty's power, power at late heavyweight? He's a phenomenal puncher at super middleweight, but at late heavyweight, without cutting any extra pounds, he's even bigger puncher. Um, really calm, really relaxed all week. Sometimes that's good in the fighter, sometimes that's bad in the fighter, but you know, we sat up talking last night late. No one talked boxing, no one talked about the fight tomorrow. We talked about everything but the fight. And that's kind of, you know, that's the air of confidence that was that we were walking around with all week. And um, how the fight went was, was a great fight while, while it last. Leon Bunn showed, showed pff, guts and abundance. He was resilient to the end. Um, too brave for his own good at times. And, you know, he just couldn't get out of the way from the shots. He started very good with the fast jab. Uh, but again, it didn't phase Potty. It really didn't phase him. And, and this is a guy, yes, he's 34. Um, I think I'm probably doing a disservice or saying he's 34, but he's 34 and he doesn't, doesn't have the maids on the clock like a 34 year old. He took a lot of time out of amateur boxing. He came back in the pro, into the pro ranks just to give it a go. It was like half hearted and the way he's turned his life around, the way he's turned his career around, is like, you know, it's one of the, the great feel-good stories of, of Irish boxing. It's remarkable what Potty's done, not, not just in Irish boxing, but boxing in general. These things don't really happen that often. Potty going forward, we're the sky, the limit. What, what's next for Potty McCrory? I, I know you've just mentioned he is likely to be out on the 10th of December. There's also talk there that um, Calla has said he has an option on his next fight. Talk me through all the ins and outs of that. Yeah, well, um, we'll discuss it next week uh, with Colin and Nissa. Let's see what the, the, they think is a good move, and I think it's a good move, and we kind of will find some common ground. But I think anyone would want to say um, Paddy McCrory after an eight. It's someone who hits that hard, someone who's entertaining as that, someone gets hit and comes back. You know, he's a promoter's dream. We do have the Odyssey booked for December 10th. I told Paddy all week that. Uh, He's got a slot on it, and don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And he kept talking about it, just didn't want him to distract from the job at hand. But the summer tenth, Paul McCrory deserves a, a return to Belfast, a homecoming fight where where the fans who didn't get the chance to come over get to you know appreciate what he's done tonight and, and come out in their droves. I think Cal is on the same mindset, but we'll we'll speak during the week. Potty brought an army of travelling fans tonight, somewhere around 400, 500 fans, I'm not too sure the exact numbers. How important is that? And, and does it just show you what, what Potty McCrory can do on the international stage? I keep saying he's a cult following. I don't know if that's doing him as a disservice, you know, a cult following, because he built it up his own way. He built that himself. He played for a football team since James Swifts. So they started getting behind him. You know, he would have went and sold the tickets to the team. He would have played football and then went training after, stuff like that. The very start of his career, started to build, slowly building momentum. And then he just started flattening, guys. Like, legit, like, legit flattening, guys. And Lenny Slew started retweeting his stuff. People like that started retweeting his stuff. He started getting recognition. And from there on, it's just been, OK, let's roll the dice. And he's, listen, I always said it. I've said it for a few years now. <coughs> I'd have 10 Paddy McCrory's working with because he's a gentleman. Um, and he trusts the process and he understands the business and now he's the IBO world champion of the yeah. I was going to say IBO world champion of the world but sure we all get in that moment Jamie who, who out there light heavy super middleweight 
who's next for Potty McCrory. I'm not talking about 10th of December because it's too soon for a massive fight. But let's, talk, let's think massive fights for Potty McCrory. Life-changing fights, who's out there? Listen, there's loads of fights. I don't really want to go in you know, calling people in or anything. Now we don't need to call people in. As you said, a nice defence, a defence at the IBO World title would be great. Um, there was a few Germans supposed to be on the undercard, uh, Leon Bauer and stuff like that. You know, we could bring one of them guys over, continue the kind of you know German element of the card, and yeah, it's um, it's something we'll sit down with and look look at next week. Conan Boxing's first world champion, so congratulations on that. And and next, um, you know, Kieran Malloy tonight. Talk to me about him because let's not forget Kieran and Kurt on this show mm. both put in unbelievable performances tonight. How happy were you with Kieran? First of all, I was ecstatic. Man. He was fighting a guy two weights heavier on him, naturally, middleweight. Kieran is a welterweight. And I th- his shot selection was unbelievable. You know, his head movement, his defense, his attack, he'll learn in abundance there. Um, guy came in a bit heavy as well. A uh, lot of kind of things that we need would you know, rectify going forward in terms of opponents and stuff and how much it. But the match was made to, to give him rounds. Um, someone who was going to test him, maybe test his chin, bring him the distance, see what his engine is like. And that's exactly what he got. And it was a, he'll learn a lot from that fight. He doesn't realise it now, and he's probably unhappy that he didn't get the stoppage on you know, a TG car and stuff like that, but he's, he's learned a lot tonight. Um, that kind of opponent is a very, very hard opponent, especially on your third fight. Kurt Walker, you know, we wanted a change of style for Kurt on this one. His last guy was a come-forward uh, Argentinian. This guy was a more awkward, rangy Colombian, throwing pot shot in dangerous way, bit him. I don't know what the fuck went on. I don't think Kurt's that good looking to get a love bait, but... Yeah, he sunk his teeth into him. Um, I didn't know what was going on, but I heard a squeal and just went, what? The? Uh, I don't know whether he, if he wanted to fight him or fuck him, but sorry, I shouldn't say shit like that. But um, yes, he, uh, he was, I thought he was class. First round, took his time to break into the new stale. His first camp, proper camp with Jose Fayekbal. H is kind of, you know, trying to work on something, mould Kurt into what he likes to see, and he did. Established his job perfectly, up and down to the body, and then found a home for the right hand. The guy took some great shots, but he was elusive, durable, and, um, yeah, exactly what we needed for Kurt. Moving on for both guys, December 10th. We'll look at uh, nice step-ups as well. Well, Jamie, congratulations. I'll let you go enjoy the night. Thank you. Cheers, Colm. I seen you kiss a camera over there. Just, I don't wanna, uh, if anyone didn't see it, Colm, run over to, in the ring and kiss the fucking camera. Can't be saying that on the AFL TV. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.